Savior, Jesus Christ as well. Uh, today is Fourth Sunday again, and every Fourth Sunday we have a video, a song presentation from our children. We're excited about that. We thank the parents and those who are working with the children for getting them out here, uh, the technicians for working with them to get that recorded. And it is our sincere prayer that you enjoy hearing from them on today. Today, we want to talk about preparation. We're continuing to prepare as disciples of Jesus Christ for whatever it is we may face on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, whatever objectives or obstacles that lie in our way, which give us an opportunity to be overcomers. I love that word. We are overcomers. We are conquerors because we overcome things that are laid in our way to distract us or deter us. And so today I'd like to continue that with the psalm penned by David of 105. And so you will hear that reading from one of our youth, uh, uh, Miss Naya. Uh, and we ask that your hearts and minds receive the gospel uh, on today. I want to begin just with a few announcements reminding us uh, on Thursday, July 30th, we will celebrate the ministry of Aldersgate uh, through our administrative council meeting. Uh, every member of the church is a part of that meeting. We ask that you call in via Zoom. Uh, it is held on Zoom. Call in via Zoom. Uh, we will begin at six o'clock, and it is our sincere prayer that you're there to uh, give, hear, receive reports, uh, and also begin to ask God, where is it uh, that I can begin to contribute to the ministry of Aldersgate? Uh, we are continuing our uh, letter writing campaign. In addition to that, uh, you received some information this week uh, about a mission we've contributed to before, uh, but the need is greater. Gateway Rescue Mission. Uh, we sent out a uh, email uh, for what they need, hand sanitizers, uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, soap, uh, things of that nature, shaving cream, uh, if you would, uh, if you would, please consider and prayerfully contribute to the Gateway Mission. Uh, in addition to the Z uh, city rezoning letter writing campaign, uh, we offer another. Uh, this uh, virus, this pandemic has exposed our systems uh, healthcare systems, uh, wage care workers in many ways. And so we would like to invite you on behalf of the TIP employees, the TIP workers uh, who work for a little or nothing and they rely so heavily on their TIP. Uh, through the leadership of our Methodist women here at Aldersgate, Gate, we invite you to join them, to join us in a letter writing campaign uh, to encourage our uh, officials, our elected officials to consider a One Fair Wage Act. And so if you would, please, ma'am, and please, sir, doing your prayers as well as your uh, meditative uh, stages during the week, if you would uh, be considerate of them uh, and join us in that, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, this is last Sunday of the month. We're wishing a final birthday to those who are in July as well as anniversaries to those who are uh, celebrating birthdays as well as anniversaries. Uh, we extend you that and uh, ask that you make way for the August babies. And so we hope that God continues to bless you. He continues to enrich, enrich you. And it is our prayer that you continue to grow as a faithful disciple of, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you bow with me as we invite the Spirit into this place? Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive us from our sin, from that which separates us from you. Father, we ask that you clear our hearts and minds now, if only for 30 to 45 minutes, give us an opportunity to hear from you. Some of us have prayed and we're waiting to hear from you. Let the day be the day we hear clearly that which you have for us to do. Father, receive our singing, receive our uh, playing of the instruments, receive our proclamation of the word, as sacrifices pleasing to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. I will call to worship, I will read the leader and ask that you read along as the people. May we begin together. May those who love your salvation say continually, great is the Lord. People, yeah, our heart is glad in God because we trust in God's holy name. 
let us make a joyful noise to the Lord. Make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. People, we praise you, O oh God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Seek Ye First. Would you join us? to God. We hope that tune sticks in your head throughout this week. A very simple tune, very simple word, scripture that we have heard repeated over and over. It is our prayer that you will seek in every corner and crevice of your life until you find our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we're fortunate to have our scripture read where our leader will lead us uh, through a psalm, Psalm uh, 105, 1 through 11 and 45b. And the gospel reading will come from Matthew 13, 31 through 30, 42 through 42. Would you welcome Miss Knight? Good morning. Uh, today I'll be reading from the Old Testament, uh, Psalms 105, verses 1 through 11 and 45b. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make his deeds known to all, all people. Sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord. Dwell on all his wondrous works. Give praise to God's holy name. Let the hearts rejoice of all those seeking the Lord. Pursue the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wondrous works he has done, all his marvelous works, and the justice he declared. You who are the offspring of Abraham, his justice. Oh, excuse me. Uh, you who are the offspring of Abraham, his servant, and the children of Jacob his chosen ones, the Lord, he is our God. His justice is everywhere throughout the whole world. God remembers his covenant forever, the word he commanded to a thousand generations, which he made with Abraham, the solemn pledge he swore to Isaac. God set, upon it, God set it up as binding law for Jacob, as eternal covenant for Israel, promising, I hereby give you the land of Canaan as your allotted inheritance. Praise the Lord. Now, our gospel reading will come from the New Testament, Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 through 33 and 44 through 52. He told another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and planted in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it's grown, it's the largest of all vegetable plants. It becomes a tree so that the birds in the sky come and nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through all the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that somebody hid in a field, which someone else found and covered up, full of joy. 
the finder sold everything and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he found one very precious pearl, he went and sold all that he owned and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that people threw into the lake and gathered all kinds of fish. When it was full, they pulled it to the shore where they sat down and put the good fish together into containers. But the bad fish they threw away. That's the way it will be at the end of the present age. The angels will go out and separate the evil ones, the evil people from the righteous people and will throw the evil ones into a burning furnace. People there will be weeping and grinding their teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. They said unto him, yes. Then he said to them, therefore, every legal expert who has been trained as a disciple for the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings old and new things out of their church chest. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for leading us in that. Would you join us now for our affirmation of faith? Let us begin together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of the heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. And to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without. Please receive this video gift on today.
Thank you so much. We hope that you enjoyed uh, that selection. Would you pause this time as we go to God to pray for those, to remember those, to honor those, and to ask for God's counsel, guidance, comfort, and blessing during our times of trials. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for an opportunity to be able to come before your throne of grace this morning. We thank you for the scheduled time we've agreed to come together regardless where we're located and offer praises to your name, not just for what you've done, for what you're doing or what you're going to do, but just because of who you are. You being God, God alone, knowing all, gives us comfort with our small brains and our limited understanding. Father, you give us joy just knowing that you are there in control, having all things in the palm of your hand knowing time before time began. And so, Father, we ask that today, whatever it is uh, we are dealing with, whatever it is uh, that is trying to form against us, whatever it is that's competing for our time and attention, Father, we ask that you loose us from that. Give us the power to overcome it. Don't just remove it. Give us the power to overcome it. Well, Father, we can be certain that we are growing stronger in the Lord. Father, we now ask you to look down upon those who are sick, those who are homeless, those who are um, preparing for surgeries or uh, testing or hospital stays or whatever the case may be, those who are experiencing grief. Father, if you would touch us with your finger of love and uh, cool uh, our aching body, calm our, our pain and alleviate any fear that is residing in our heart. Give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, we know it begins with forgiveness. And so whatever ought in our eyes we have or whatever ought we have against someone else or, or whatever they may have against us, Father, we ask you to begin to work on both of our hearts that we may be able to release it, let it go and move forward, growing stronger and becoming more faithful disciples. Father, receive these song selection, prayer, singing, scripture readings. Please receive them and allow them to be a representation of who we are, who we're trying to become more like Christ. Grant us the mind of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. Hear our prayer. May God bless you and continue to smile upon you and answer every prayer concern you have raised to him on today. At this time, once again, I want to take the opportunity to thank you for your contributions to the ministry of Aldersgate. Those of you that are sending in your contributions, your tithes and offering, we thank you from the bottom of our heart. Uh, we ask if you would like to send in, if you would send to the screen, to the, to the address that's on the screen, uh, as well as through your financial institution. I want to go a step further because we recognize this pandemic. Uh, it sees no color, no ethnicity, or whatever the situation may be. Uh, we have an outreach program here at Alders Gate. Uh, well, although we can't afford to take on the total expense of whatever it is you're dealing with, uh, we can assist as well as point you in the right direction. If you're at home and you're listening to us or you know someone that is struggling to put food on the table or to keep the lights on or something like that, we ask that you reach out to us uh, Monday through Thursday, nine to one. May God bless you and may he forever smile upon you 
At this time, would you join us as we return thanks to God for all that he has done, enabling us to give back to him. All things. All things come of thee. God bless you. I want to begin today by being nosy. And I hope that's all right. I want to be just a little nosy. And I want to ask you, what did you have for dinner last evening? Was it everything that you wanted? Did it hit the spot? Was there a conversation around the dinner? Was there a conversation before or even after? Dinner, in my opinion, is um, the most essential or at least one of the most essential meals of the day. I know you're gonna say, no, Pastor, breakfast from a health perspective is the most important meal of the day. It's the meal that we build everything on. Therefore, one needs to stop and enjoy breakfast. Sad to say, most of us don't do that because we're rushing out the door, at least we used to, rush out the door trying to get to where we were trying to get to, whether it be school or work or wherever we was going, we were rushing out the door, eating something in the car or on our way. Someone may say lunch is, is essential because nine times out of 10, if you need breakfast, you need something to tide you over. And you may say lunch is really important. Yes, lunch is important, but it's more like a break. If lunch was truly important, I believe we'd get more than 30 minutes to digest it when we go out to eat when we're at work. But I truly believe that dinner now, before I go any further, I know some of you saying, well, I don't eat dinner. You may not have called it dinner. You may call it supper, whichever one, vice versa. They're interchangeable, whatever it is. It is a time when we have additional time to slow down and smell the roses, slow down and digest our food. I remember being in Atlanta all of my life when we've gone to restaurants, maybe it was me, but when we go to restaurants, we were in there, we waited to be seated. Once we were seated, we completed our meal. And after we completed our meal, we were on our way. We got up because somebody else was waiting for the table. I remember going out with a couple in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was just totally different in Atlanta. Everybody know that. When we got there, uh, we waited for our table. After we were seated, we sat down and enjoyed our food. And then I got ready to get up and leave and they asked for coffee. And I said, okay, now we're drinking coffee. And from coffee, they just proceeded to lounge. And I said, man, we got to go. Don't you know folks waiting on it? They said, no, we paid for this table. This is our time. We're enjoying our dinner. I want to ask you what you had for dinner, because I think dinner is the most important time. It's when at least it used to be when families paused, when children were not in school and when dads and mom were not at work or children wasn't at the babysitter or whatever the situation may be. It was that time of evening when supper or dinner, whatever you prefer, was prepared and we would sit at the table. There were no cell phones back then. That was just the phone hanging on the wall with the long card, but you knew better not to get up and answer it. Dinner was not disturbed. We sit down, we listen to one another, we talked to one another, we heard about what was troubling each other, and the world seemed to have been better back then. While you was having dinner last night, while I was having dinner last night, what happened? In 1967, the world was introduced to what would become one of the, one of the best 100 greatest films of all times. 
the American comedy drama produced by Stanley Kramer and written by William Rose star Spencer Tracy, uh, as well as Sidney Poitier and, 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 and Catherine Hepburn. And it also features Hepburn niece, Catherine Holter. And you know the story, you, you've seen this in 1967. That was a movie that come out. This movie that I'm talking about was Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. I watched this film many days with my parents trying to understand why 90% of the movie dealt with every reason under the sun why this interracial couple should not get married and only 10% at the end about love that will last. It was entitled, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? As the movie goes along, the bride-to-be is constantly going back and forth to the maid and, and telling her, well, I need you to make one more dinner placement. I need you. Somebody else is coming. Somebody else has been invited to celebrate this time with us where we're going to deal with us getting married, a white woman as well as a black man. See, it wasn't, it, it was only 53 years ago. I don't know if we're still discussing it now, but it's 53 years ago, the height of the dinner table dealt with interracial marriage. And only 53 years ago, was it still illegal to marry in over 17 states in the United States of America? I enjoy this film because if you watch the movie, one of the things you'll notice is that before dinner, has been eaten, everybody is talking, staying in the room, staying in the house, working out their differences and striving to live with one another and listen to one another. So it is today, Psalms 105, we have the penmanship of David that he's given instructions to the individual. I want you to prepare for dinner. I want you to prepare and sing this song at all times and do not change it. If you add another song, don't take this one away. I believe if it was around 95 or 96 or either 2000, we still sing it today. The song probably would be something like Amazing Grace. Everybody knows it. it relatable to everybody because number one, it talks about us collectively, but it also hits home uh, individually because it talks about a wretch undone. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And I believe the more, in order for us to become found, we have to become found individually. But it starts with us sitting down, willing to have the tough conversations. Dinner is served every night. Supper at various times in various locations. All of us don't eat it at the same time. Some of us eat it in front of the television. Some of us eat it at the table. Some of us eat it in the bedroom. Some of us eat it standing up. At different times, it's served every night. But did you not know that injustice doesn't have a ceasefire in order for us to eat? Did you not know sin takes a break off in order for us to fill our belly? As a matter of fact, it lays waiting for us to give it an opportunity to rear its ugly head. So we may sit down to eat. And we may overindulge because as they used to say, what's that saying? Your eyes are bigger than your stomach, something like that. My brothers and sisters, I believe if we can prepare for dinner, if we can invite those for dinner who oppose what God says and oppose what we're doing, if we can invite those around us, and it's a perspective change, because if I can gather people that tells me every reason why I shouldn't serve God and why I shouldn't forgive, why I shouldn't maintain a lifestyle dedicated to God, if I can surround myself with those, those are individuals that God, number one, has blessed me to feed, and number two, has given the opportunity to, to be connected Converted. Because see, at the end of the day, it's not about you and anybody else. It's about God. So regardless what's going on, crime is crime. Hatred is hatred. Everything that's going on, we worry about what they're going to say and what's, what's, what's going to come out of all of this. 
I like David perspective. Now, this is the first time we see this Psalm uh, 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 here in Psalm 105. Uh, uh, David actually used it in, in first Chronicles chapter 16. And, and, and it comes from that word for word where he's invoking and telling them, all that you do, make sure you maintain this hymn because you have a duty to thank God. Wow, imagine that. He starts off, oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the people. What better way to talk about what God has done than around the dinner table? I like how he puts it into perspective. Thanking God is our duty. Wait, wait a minute. Out of all of it, out of all of it, you're telling me thanking God is our duty. We're, 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 we're driving ourselves crazy about conversation, whether to return to this or whether to do this. No one can tell you more clearly what you're comfortable with than the one who created. And that's the one who gives us common sense. You can't force people to wear masks, but you can pray for them and you can carry on. You can put yours on and stay home as much as you can. That's how we got to change this thing around. And once we change it around, we still give thanks to God in the midst of it. Why? Because it's our duty. Those of us who follow Christ, it is our duty to thank God, not for what he's done, but for who he is. Understanding that God is God and God is God alone. And because he's God alone, we should thank him every chance we get. Brothers and sisters, we have an opportunity to not change the pandemic, but change our perspective. Let me share with you one of the ways we can change. And this is anticipation of who's coming to dinner. I'll touch on that in just a moment. We can change the question from, how are you doing in this pandemic? To how are you progressing? How are you thriving? How are you praising? How are you maintaining God in the midst of all of this chaos? You know, somebody said to me the other day, you know, Henry, it's going to get worse before it get better. I don't disagree with that. My question is, which worse than better are we referring to? <laughs> because out of all of it, Christ is coming back for those of us who are striving to get to him. And yes, in that day, matter of fact, the scripture, the gospel talked about it a while ago, there'd be crying and gnashing of teeth. That's going to be worse. That's going to be pretty bad for those who do not trust in God. So in closing, this young lady was going back and forth in this movie. I like she was giving her the heads up because nobody want to be surprised. I believe we've been on this Christian journey long enough, and I believe we have enough elders and clouds of witnesses around us. I believe we have enough historical data to understand that that which is coming to dinner is that which opposes whatever we're trying to do. Whatever God is calling you to do, whatever God is beckoning you could do, you can best believe it's going to show up at dinner. Whatever you have a desire for. If you have a desire to get closer with Christ, then skepticism will show up at dinner. If you have a desire, a desire to, 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 to forgive, then jealousy, hatred, envy will show up and remind you of reasons you shouldn't forgive. But if we're prepared for it, how do we come prepared for dinner? We come thanking God. You know, the first thing we do after dinner has been prepared is we sit down and we bless it. Blessing it is giving thanks to God for being able to buy it, purchase it, clean it, cook it, make it smell so good as we prepare to engage. My brothers and sisters, I leave you with this. Tonight, as you prepare for your dinner, supper, whatever you want to call it, at whatever time, with or without whatever person, in whatever location, begin to ask God in ways you can get involved in restoring our world, our nation, our community, our neighborhood, Lord have mercy, our household. Something as simple 
as having dinner together. I know you say, you know, I live by myself. I don't know. Technology. Technology. I heard a guy the other day on, uh, he's dating on Zoom. And, 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 and what he's doing is taking pictures of, 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 of these exotic places. And, and, and while he's talking to the young lady on, on Zoom, he'll put up a picture and say, you know, I know we can't go now, but if I could, I'd take you. Yeah. I don't know how much of that you believe, but the point I'm trying to make is that technology is here for us. And so at this time, as we have in dinner, prepare for the tough conversation. Prepare, prepare to answer questions for individuals who are really struggling right now. Prepare to hear them, prepare to be a listening ear. I believe if we prepare for the negativity that comes, we can recognize it when it shows up. We can cut it down, knock it down, cut it off, and we can respond with positive eyes. Because brothers and sisters, we, we have the enemy out there. We, 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 we have enough negativity around us. It is our duty. It is our duty to thank God. I want to close with this story from this week, how my heart was inspired. While having dinner one day, a young lady from Aldersgate called and say, uh, you know, perhaps I can't do what I used to do, but I want to continue to do what it is that I'm doing. I'm helping this <clears throat> other person. I want to continue to do it, but I need you to know I can't, because I can't continue to do it, I want to be the fourth person. I want to be the fourth person. After you call one, two, and three, I want to be the fourth person. And if you can't get one, two, and three to do it, let me know and I'll get it done. My heart was filled with joy. My heart was filled. She could have easily said, I can't do it no more. Go and find somebody else. But she said, no, I need to back on. But if you just have to call, if you can't find anybody else, let me know and I'll be there. I hope your heart is flooded with joy as well for folk like you and around you who are offering themselves and sacrificing themselves in order to welcome someone to dinner, to supper, to lunch, whatever it is, in order to break bread with somebody and offer them the love of Christ. My brothers and sisters, this is it's nomination season. Lay leadership and development, we've been working behind the scenes and we would gladly appreciate if you would begin to pray to God Ask him to work on your heart to show you what he'll like you to do in this season of your life, where he'll like you to serve in this season of your life. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> At this time, we extend an invitation as we do every Sunday, an invitation to accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. That means we'll submit to his ways. We'll, we'll live life the way he said we should live life. And uh, uh, the precepts that he subscribed to us, forgiveness of sin, forgiveness of others, loving one another, feeding, helping. We agree to do that. And if you're with us and you're not doing that, we invite you to email us or give us a call to the number on the screen. We'd love to talk to you about that want to encourage you to develop your relationship with Christ. For those of us who are on the battlefield, you may be tired and weak. We invite you to reaffirm your faith, knowing that God is right there where we left him at. And he doesn't judge. He doesn't condemn. He just stands with outstretched arms. <clears throat> as, as we sing this song, we ask that you contemplate giving your life to Christ. Change my heart, oh God. Oh God, may I be like you.
Brothers and sisters, we are so excited. We're so glad for you to take time out of your busy schedule to join us. We know and we support the other ministries that are going on around the world that are at our fingertips at this moment. We support that and we encourage that in every shape, form, and fashion. We just want you to know we appreciate you for tuning in to Aldersgate here on our Facebook Live page on our Zoom. Uh, and we also have a YouTube channel where you can go and access it. May God continue to bless and smile upon each of you. Would you receive the benediction today as we leave this place? Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, being with us today. Now, may your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide, comfort, protect each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Please join us as we sing, amen. God bless you. Have an awesome week.